Thank you for joining the ProLender Closing Training. We'll discuss how to draw closing documents and fund the loan within ProLender. So let's get started. From your desktop, double click on the ProLender icon. Enter in your username and password for ProLender. Locate the loan by using the loan search icon. Enter in the borrower name and click search. Once you've found your loan, double click and it will open in ProLender. The doctor will want to go into the Documents screen in the Closing Department on the Summary tab. This is where you'll find key information like the dates, who is assigned to the loan as the doctor. Next you'll want to go uh, into the 1003 Department, working our way from the top to the bottom. As a doctor, you'll want to make sure that you verify all of the information in the 1003 for all the borrower sets. You'll want to check your type of mortgage, the property information, and of course the details of transaction to make sure that everything looks correct. You'll also want to go into your general department. Uh, one of the things that you'll want to be make sure that you check is to make sure that you have the correct loan program. That will be important when you export to your doc system. You'll want to verify that your loan source, the disclosure, HMDA QC, closing agents, and verification tracking has all been completed. You'll also want to go into your underwriting department and verify that your investor has been selected. That will also be important when you export to your doc system. Going back to the document screen, you want to make sure that as you're working on the loan, you enter in the doc's drawn date, the doc's sent date, uh, doc's needed, doc's back, all of those good dates that are going to trigger some reporting. You also want to make sure that you are actually the doc drawer that's drawing the documents. Select your doc system. And if you're using Doc Magic, then the doc system loan ID is automatically going to populate for you. You can also select how the docs are being sent and to whom. Uh, next, you'll want to go to your pre doc check. Now, this is a way for you to check to make sure that uh, things that are outside of ProLender are actually being checked. So if you notice I used the action items, you can double click on any of the items to sign off the violation. Um, if you want to um, you know, take off that sign off, you can just double click on it again and select yes. But these are for things that are outside of ProLender, so things that you'll have to manually check with your eyes. You'll also want to go to the vesting tab. Make sure that you have your legal description. You can bring over your borrower vesting by using the action item. It'll pull it from the 1003 so you don't have to manually type it in. You also, of course, want to make sure that you have your condo or PUD name. We have a tab for contact information. Um, it's important that you enter in the borrower's mailing address. Again, we have an action item that will pull it over from the property address if it's the same. Uh, if it's a purchase, then of course the mailing address would be different. Uh, if this happens to be a purchase, uh, you can enter in the seller, the listing agent, and the selling agent's information. We also have a tab for non-purchasing spouses. So again, go up to Actions, enter or select your uh, Insert Non-Purchasing Borrower. You want to enter in their information, and this is going to transmit over to your doc system. So it's important that if you have one of these that you enter it in. So we'll go ahead and click Close to add this uh, non-purchasing spouse. Next, we'll move to the Payments and Premiums. Here you'll be able to see the breakdown of principal interest, impounds, uh, you'll want to enter in the note date, the first payment date, and we'll actually calculate the maturity date for you. Uh, you'll want to enter in your late charge percent, late charge days, and the APR from till and finance charge will actually automatically populate from your doc system. Uh, so then we also have a section for your premiums, so you can keep track of the borrower premium percentage or your broker compensation. Uh, we do have an action item that will allow you to bring over your broker compensation if you have that entered into the system. Next we'll take a look at the loan fees. You'll notice that we do have the various sections that you're familiar with um, for your different fees. You'll notice that if you place your cursor in the fee amount and go up to actions, we can actually take a look at the detail for this particular fee. One of the options that you want to pay particular attention to is the in disbursement. In disbursement, yes, uh, it means that the fee will be included in the disbursement. So in disbursement, no, means that it will be withheld from the disbursement, and this will be important for your funder. Now, uh, you can notice that we have all of the fees that you're used to having. You can manually enter them in if you'd like, or you can use an option under Actions. 
you can apply a fee schedule. So basically your fee schedule is just a group of fees that have been set up beforehand that you can apply to the loan. Uh, next we have our 800 series continued and you'll notice that there are some miscellaneous fees. You can select one from the list and it'll automatically populate an amount to paid to and paid by if that's already been set up for you. We have the 900 series, so for prepaids, if you put your cursor in the number of days for your prepaid interest and go up to actions, you can edit, view the details. Here you can enter in your from and your to dates. You can select whether it's based on 360 or 365, and you can change the number of decimal places used. Uh, so you can make sure that that per diem amount is to the penny. And uh, next, oh, any of the other options down at the bottom, that's going to actually pull over if they've been entered in your taxes and insurance. And that's something that the underwriter should be completing. On the thousands tab is where you're going to set up your impound account. So if we enter in our uh, annual amount and kind of tab through, it's going to calculate that monthly for us. We can select our paid by. Um, you can also, if you put your cursor in that annual amount and go up to actions, you can use the edit view impound detail and this is where you'll set up the frequency. So if it's maybe semi-annual, you'll enter in the disbursement dates and ProLender is actually going to calculate that disbursement amount for you. If it's not an equal 50-50 split, you can just manually change it. So we'll go ahead and click close. Now another option on this screen is if you go up back up to actions and click on run, uh, I'm sorry, calculate your impound months, it's going to actually take a look at all the information that you've entered and calculate it for you. We can also run an impound analysis that will let us take a snapshot look of how we've actually set up this impound account. It's going to give us our current initial balance, what it, the suggested balance should be, and then a running total um, month by month of the disbursements to make sure that we have enough money in that account to make all those payments. Now the, thou the 1100s, 1200s, and 1300 series all work the same as the other tabs. Next, you'll want to verify that all of your prior to dock conditions have been cleared. If we try to save at this point, we'll probably get a business rule that lets us know that we need to have all of those prior to dock conditions signed off. So if you double click on it, enter in your clear date, um, then that last prior to dock condition is actually cleared. So uh, conditions in red are still outstanding, in black have been cleared. Next, we'll go to the service providers. Now all of the service providers that are already on the loan will show up at the top. If you need to add any additional, you can go up to Actions and use the Insert Service Provider or the Batch Insert, uh, which allows you to just check the box next to the name and add them to the loan. Now it's important that you have these on your loan because they'll export over to your DOC system so that you, uh, it knows where those fees are going. So we'll go ahead and save. Now since we didn't get any business rule violations or warnings, it's safe to move forward in the process. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the lock reconciliation and compare the lock record to the loan record. The goal is to make sure that everything matches and it looks like the debt ratio shown in bold doesn't match. So it would be my responsibility to go back to the underwriter or the secondary marketing person and let them know that in fact there is a discrepancy on the loan. So you want to stop and make sure that this gets corrected before you actually draw your docs. So if we uh, go ahead and click close, let's say that they have fixed the issue and now we're ready to move forward. There are three key pieces of information that must be on the loan in order to export to your doc system the loan program, the plan code, and the investor. So we need to make sure that all three of those are on this loan in order to export. Looking at the loan, I'm going to go to the underwriting department on the decision screen and on the overview tab and verify that the investor is correct. So again, when I mentioned earlier that the investor will be important, this is why. Next, we'll go to the loan information and on our program details, we'll verify that the loan program is correct. Now we're going to drill down into the loan program and view the details. Um, here we're going to take a look at the investor tab and make sure that our investor has a plan code entered. Now we're using DSI in this example, so I'm going to make sure that that CONV, which happens to be the plan code for this program, is entered. If you had a different investor, their program would need to be entered. So now that we have all three pieces on the loan, now it's time to actually export to our doc system. Now I can go up to tools and select the print docs. 
And here I'll be able to choose which doc vendor I want to use. In this case, we'll do the proof sheet for doc magic, and I'll just click select. And I'll want to complete any missing information. So if there is an alternate lender code or transfer to, you can show your results, check which ones you want, choose the document format. I'm going to choose PDF and click print. Now all the information is being sent over to Doc Magic, and they're going to return to me some violation messages. The same messages that you would see inside their system had you manually entered this loan. So you want to make sure that you get all of these uh, corrected before you actually print your docs. But I'm going to go ahead and click close. And then they're going to return to me the PDF of the uh, proof sheet. Once you're satisfied with the loan information in ProLender, you've made any corrections, we can follow the same steps as before, but this time choose our closing documents instead of the proof sheet. So we can choose any of these um, results that we want to see. We'll send the information over to the doc system. And again, they're going to return some validation results. At this point, you shouldn't have any because they should all have been taken care of. Now here we can see our Doc Magic results, but now we'll want to actually go into Doc Magic and view the documents. We can take advantage of all of the other features that they offer and print our documents from there. For questions about drawing closing documents through ProLender, contact us at support at ProLender.com.